Hi guys and welcome to part 2 on the how to spray candy video. So in this video we're going to pick up from where we left off in part number 1. We're going to finish off the last two coats of candy using the iWater W400, uh, using the Aurora Luma Light, and then we're going to go on to laying down the clear coat or lacquer um, with the GTI Pro Light with the T110 air cap. So as you can see here, as we're getting more of a build, this candy now is getting more intense. So we're going now, we've got a nice even coat, we're getting basically heavier wet coats and each and every single coat we're making sure as in part one that we get all the edges any little nooks and crannies on the panels and try and keep this as even and as nice as possible because anything that's too heavy in one area and not another when it's lacquered and out in the sun is going to show up as being slightly strange and as you can see there when I'm just testing that with the light there you can see just how much that silver base coat that we used at the start really shines through this blue candy. So although it does look that like then, you know, now we've lost all that silver out in the sun, because candy is a transparent paint, um, all that silver is going to shine through that blue and give a real nice custom effect to the show bike. And because candy is transparent, that is why it's so important that on each and every coat you make sure you get all your edges and try your utmost to get a really nice even coverage throughout all your panels. And try and also get the same amount of build on each and every panel because as in part one, like I said, if you don't get the same coverage on each and every panel, if you bolted two of these panels together anywhere on the bike, then each panel will look off. And you don't want a candy paint job like this looking at a different shade because once you've done it once it's really hard to match back up you're going to have to put it on in the exact same sequence the exact same thickness the exact amount of same coats and just as wet or as dry as you put it on each and every time so you see here um big benefit of this light is that i can check in all those recesses and all those corners and because the light is the same band as the sun um it gives me a real nice colour range to look straight through this candy and I can see instantly if there are any areas that still look uncovered. Now, I'm not sure how well this comes through on the video. I did have a quick look at part one and it does look a bit bright. But as this gets darker, you can see a little bit better from a viewer's point of view just how much the light really does show the colour as it's going down. And at the end... Um, of the two candy bits, I've put a little bit in slow motion so you can see right there you can see just how bright that silver shines through and it gives you a real good idea for coverage and also how even you've put this candy down because it really does show every little defect in your base coat, in your candies and in everything that you put down with it um, even coming away from the custom sort of side of things um, I've painted a few cars with this now, a few of you guys out there might know that silvers can be a bit funny to blend at times. Um, and having the light on the gun and actually switched on while you're doing the blends really does give you a good indication of how nice your blend is rather than a sort of, we've all done it, where we've blended up a silver car and we've got it outside and we thought, ooh, uh, you know, you can see it across from the other side of the car park. But sometimes it won't show in your spray booth because of the artificial light and the colour range of artificial lights. So it is a handy little tool to have. Um, I found it really useful. I've done a couple of jobs with it now. It took a little bit of time to get used to. Um, but this was one piece of kit that I really wanted for jobs like this. Um, and for those really awkward pearl colours that go on really see through and take quite a bit of colouring up because it gives such a good indication, uh, more than anything I'd say, of coverage. It's brilliant for coverage checking without having to put your spray gun down and go and pick up a 3M sun gun or any other sort of sun gun light and check as you're going along. As you can see there, I can check that. It's perfectly even. I can see how the silver's popping through the candy straight away. 
such a brilliant little tool. Now, I had some comments on video number one saying, oh, well, you might as well just strap a torch to your spray gun. Um, at the end of the day, if you can go out and spend all that money on something like a 3M sun gun, which a lot of people do do for colour checking and that sort of thing, then I don't see why you couldn't go out and get yourself one of these instead so you could do it while you're actually painting the job. Or, you know, guys can go out and spend five, six, seven, eight hundred pounds on a spray gun, but think that two, two hundred and fifty pounds, um, whatever the retail is on one of these, is too much to spend on a light that could save you from missing part of a job and having to redo a whole job like this candy bike. I felt uh, um, a lot more confident doing this with the light than I would have done without. Um, and I've got quite a lot of experience with candy and it was a massive help. Um, if I had bought this and had this shipped over, I'd have been more than happy with it for the money that I paid for it. Um, and it's done exactly the job that I hoped it would um, for the reason that I bought it for. So that's just really a little bit of what I think about this light. Um, I did try it with lacquer, um, which I have to say, I did struggle with a little bit on the lacquer side because it looked, it was coming off a bit too bright. Um, but for the purpose that I bought this for doing custom work, like candies, um, it'd be great also for stuff like flakes and fine pearls and uh, even on the smash repair side and the body repair side when, like I said the other day, if you're doing restoration work and you've got, say, you're getting tight engine bays or interiors of cars, something like this, you know, say if you're setting up another light, it's shining exactly where you want it, when you want it, there's no setup, there's no messing around. Basically, unscrew your air cap, fit this on, screw your air cap on, make sure your battery's charged, and away you go. Um, and like I said, I already sprayed a whole van with this the other day, two separate colours over two days, and I used the light throughout all of it, and I only managed to flatten one battery, um, which was the battery that you saw going down in the first video. So overall, I am more than impressed with it. And as you can see there, coverage wise, underneath the panel, without having to get a separate light out to check, I can see exactly how covered I am in those dark places where the light won't catch. Um, brilliant little piece of kit, I have to say. Love mine. Um, if anyone's got one, love to hear your views on one. I know a few people since watching this have said that they want um, to get in touch with the company and go and buy one for themselves um, and get in touch with them. Um, on Facebook, on Instagram, or just go direct to their website and I'll try and leave a link in that for the description below for you. So back to the task at hand now. As you can see, I've just turned these panels around um, just so I can make sure on this last coat that I can really double check the coverage on the, those last edges that were a bit hidden really um, from where I was spraying earlier on. I'm not going too mad on this last coat. I'm just get, making sure that everything's even and most of all, these little tough, hard to reach areas um, are all well covered and we're all ready to go for the lacquer in a minute. So, lacquer wise, um, I'm going to be using a Capsi UHS um, lacquer and I'm going to be using that through the GTI Pro Light from Devilbis with my T110 air cap. Now, I have to say, when I first bought this Bel Area, um, this was like my new favourite gun. Um, and I've just recently bought myself a GTI Pro Light, uh, and I've got the T110 air cap set up on it. And I basically just got this uh, Pro Light for HS lacquer. So I still use this eye water uh, a lot um, for jobs like this, um, for anything that involves the light, because the light's got the fitment for this, and also for anything that I do in an MS lacquer. Um, and while I'm making this, I have also just got today a standard W400 Iwata um, which I'll be doing a bit of a review on against my Bel Area just to see the difference because a lot of you guys have been asking me what's the difference between a Bel Area and the standard W400 and the answer to that is I can't tell you but when I do the review we are going to find out and we're going to answer that question for you. Um, so as you can see um, 
everything I'm just giving a quick tickle around now just to make sure that everything's covered and I'm happy with how everything looks um, so what I don't want to do now is rush putting this lacquer on here without triple checking everything if you get this lacquer down too soon then you're going to end up with problems you're going to end up with a costly and long redo when it comes to candy believe me I've done it and it's no fun so this last coat is 110% now just to make sure that we are happy with how everything looks and we've got all them backs and all them little edges because those edges when you're doing a candy if you've not got enough coverage on those as soon as you get one of these panels outside it will shine bright silver on them edges before you even get the sun brightly on it and it just makes it look so off so I can't sort of drum it in enough in this video how keen you have to be to try and get everything even and nice edges and nice overlaps nice even coverage and just really take your time if it's your first time using candy go and get yourself a cheap new wing from a motor factors say euro car parts or somewhere like that pick yourself up a cheap wing have a play don't just go straight on something that you're doing on a customer's or something of your own and just have a bash because you could end up wasting a lot of money's worth of materials take your time do your research um, you know watch a few videos there's plenty of videos out there that you can have a look at um, and give it a try on something that doesn't matter before you go trying to put this on you know a car or a bike or whatever it is you want to paint with it and the other thing to mention is if you've got a couple of different spray guns don't try and put it through the spray gun that you're not going to be spraying it with i.e. if you've got a full size gun like the IWAR W400 don't try and put your candy on with a mini gun because when you start putting it on with the bigger spray gun with a bigger tip like this you're going to find the coverage um, and the flow and everything completely different so trial it with the same equipment that you're going to be using when you come to do it on your job so this is the final part of the final coat now um, we've got the last little slow motion bit in a second just so you can see the finished actual candy on the side of this tailpiece now um, and as you can see it's such a real nice colour this is um, it's always worth making sure you put down a really good ground coat um, like that coarse metallic silver that we used because when this gets out in the sun it really does pop nice um, so again everything really in candy is in the prep prep your booth prep your panels prep your primer absolutely everything just go overboard on your prep to make sure everything is as clean and as nice as possible and you'll end up with a real nice looking job like this at the end of it so now it's time to put some lacquer down for the lacquer wise we're using the Devilbus GTI Pro Light um, my Pro Light is in a 1.3 setup and I'm using the T110 air cap which is basically the best air cap that is designed for HS or UHS um, lacquers and direct gloss and products um, but also it's the best air cap that I've found for getting that super flat finish um, for jobs like this um, you can get a nice factory finish with it um, by altering your settings but I find that with this spray gun if you run it at 2 bar um, I've gone 2 turns out on the fluid um, with this particular lacquer uh, and as you can see it goes on really wet uh, really quickly I did end up actually just knocking this a touch back um, because I left the lacquer in the booth to warm up um, so it had gone a touch thinner than I was expecting so when I put that first coat down I have to say I was touch and go whether that first panel was actually going to end up with half the lacquer on the floor but luckily it all came out really nice so lacquer wise um, it's definitely my favourite spray gun for HS lacquer um, and I'm trialling as you can see there the Ferrecla disposable cup system now unlike the 3M PPS system um, it has no hard pot surrounding the actual um, disposable cup itself now uh, a friend of mine said to me that he struggles a bit with it because it kind of feels like the top of the pot flops around a bit um, but for what is a cheaper version I have to say I really prefer 
this Freckler disposable system, which is the Freckler OPS disposable system, um, over the 3M system. Um, it's got adapters for pretty much um, all the big makes of spray guns, um, the same as the 3M system has. Uh, they're, a, they're a little bit cheaper um, than the 3M system, um, but bearing in mind the 3M's prices on most stuff, that's not exactly hard. Um, but I also found that unlike the 3M, it didn't restrict the flow of lacquer on my spray gun, uh, which was the biggest thing that annoyed me about the 3M system. I found that it really vacuumed and stopped me from going as fast and as wet as I wanted with the lacquer. Um, I've used these Freckler ones now for about a week, and I have to say that for lacquer, um, especially through the Prolite, which really hoses it on, it didn't restrict the flow at all compared to having the standard Davilbus pot on it. Um, also, because I've been doing a few different trials with the different disposable cup systems, I've also got some of the Davilbus D cup ones coming soon. Um, Davilbus have said they'd send me out so I can see how theirs, their specific D cups actually feel on the Prolite, which will be nice. Uh, we have to trial their disposable cup system on their own gun. Um, rather than like the Fracla ones and the 3M ones which are just a generic mate that we're trying on different match with manufacturer spray guns to see how they feel. So I also get a bit of a, uh, a sort of trio of a review of the different disposable cup systems I've tried um, and put all that together into one video so you guys can get a bit of a look and a bit of a feel for those and the pricing and also my thoughts on them uh, when I've tried them all out. So, lacquer wise then, getting back to the actual job at hand, sorry if I'm going off on a bit of a tangent, it's a bit hard to narrate up um, a half hour video uh, and try and keep it entertained and, you know, you guys entertained and keep it full of, you know, information that's useful to you guys watching rather than me just kind of jabbering on about nothing at all. Um, so lacquer wise, we're going... Same as we would on any job, um, but with this being a custom job, I am putting this on a lot wetter for the first coat. I'm going for a really nice, full, wet coat on this first coat, because um, I want a really good build on this, so I can give it a bit of a denib and a polish, because I want this to finish off a real nice glass finish. Now off the gun, I was more than happy with this. There's one or two tiny little bits in it, um, but... Overall, I have to say I was more than happy. You know, we've been spraying in the booth now at this point for quite some time. So there's a lot of opportunity for dust and stuff to land in this during the time that I've been doing this. And I have had to go in and out of the booth a few times. Um, just because of the length of time I ended up in there. So, um, overall, um, really happy with how these came out. Um, so we're just going for that first real nice wet closed coat and then the second coat after we've give this around about a 10 minute flash off time um, and we're, up, we're about 20 degrees so we're giving it a real nice flash off with it being a UHS clear to let that flash off nicely so we can go back over in a minute with a real nice heavy wet coat again um, and then it'll give it that really nice glassed out finish at the end of it now one thing I did find with this lacquer is, it did go on really wet, um, but I did find that it took, I'd say, a minute or so to flow out nicely to the finish that it was actually ended up. And when it was going on, it kind of felt like it went on a bit heavy and a bit peely, but within, so I'd say, 30 to 60 seconds, it had really glassed out nice. Um, and for a lacquer that's not high-end, it's not liquid glass money, um, it's not sort of Max Mayer money, it's at the cheaper end of the UHS um, spectrum if you want, but it was really nice. Um, I've still got these panels with me at the moment, and it's not dropped any gloss, it polished up really nice. Quite a nice lacquer for the money, I have to say. So I hope during this video guys that we've managed to keep you guys entertained enough, and that people have learned a little bit from it. Um, and also, at this point, you're still watching. Um, you might have muted me out and stuck some music on, which is fine by me if that's what you want to do. Um, 
I get bored of listening to my own voice, listening to these back, so I'm sure you guys will get bored of them as well. Um, try to include as much information uh, about the products, materials, tooling as well um, in these videos as we can. Um, to try and help you guys along. Um, I had a lot of requests um, to do a candy video, a lot of requests to do a video for the Luma light, and also. Um, I've been getting a lot of requests on the PPS systems and different spray guns and all that sort of stuff. So this video is not just really candy. You're getting a lot of different information, a lot of looks, a lot of different aspects of what I'm using, how I'm using it, and how, for me, how it feels. Um, and that's one important thing, whether it be a spray gun, a lacquer, a cup system, the light. Everything that I'm giving you is just an honest review and an honest thought on what I think of it from my experience with it. I can't give everything a good review and I'm under no ob obligation from anyone who sends me anything to give it a good review. Um, same as this Prolite, people were saying, I had someone say to me, oh well, you know, you would say a developer's Prolite is good because you probably got given it. This GTI Prolite was bought out of my own pocket from Spray Guns Direct. And it's probably the best purchase I've made in a long time, and I am more than happy with it. Um, all the bits and bobs, like 3M PPS system, I was donated that from a place. Uh, absolutely hate that. Um, you know, now I've run out of those, um, I can't see that I'll be using those again. Um, not my cup of tea. I think I'm going to carry on buying these for Eclat OPS cups. But we'll see when I get to the developer side of things and try their D cups because I know they're about the same sort of price range as these so it'd be nice to see what how they fare up against the other two makes that I've tried so far so as always guys if you've got any questions about the materials about the process about how we went through things about the spray guns or setups or just any questions in general or maybe you've got some questions about a video that you'd like to see in the future or something you're struggling with comment below um, I, I try and get back same day if I can sometimes it's two days depending on how busy I am but I'll always get back and answer your questions and queries about jobs, products, materials and give you any advice I can um, as best as I can for you so if you're new to the channel um, I hope you've enjoyed these two videos uh, if you missed part one, I will have put a few links during this part two so you can catch up on part one and then maybe you can sit down the next night or even the same night if you're really interested and watch this part two. Um, if you are new, please don't forget, give the videos a like, uh, hit the subscribe button. We've got new videos going up and new content all the time. We've got accident repairs, resprays, um, tips on tooling, um, blocking primers, how to apply primers correctly, spray guns, absolutely everything we can try and fit in, we're trying to fit in for you guys. So please do give us a like and a subscribe and I'm going to leave you now with this last bit, little bit and a bit of music and then there's plenty of pictures at the end so you can see the finished job in its entirety and I hope you guys have enjoyed. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.